like yeah mm -hmm. um and it, it is focused heavily on the cramorant but it is playing a different suite of attackers it's just kind of basically you saying okay mew is like this this good solid um you know pokemon that can go with a bunch of other things and allow a bunch of other things to happen and it's a very frank persic sort of innovative deck right these players are getting set up here we're about to get into the game very shortly frank's opponent is going to be matt marsick not a player that i'm familiar with um but definitely someone who should be excited to be at this point in the tournament on that win and in round and he looks like he will be playing the ultra necrozma deck that and we haven't seen um, on camera yet today, We've, we are going to feature six different decks across these rounds. Um, right. But is I think what a lot of people expect it to be a role player here. Not, not a huge surprise, just a, a good solid deck. Yeah, not something that really saw too much play and expanded, but I think most players agreed coming in that it was going to be much more played this tournament than it was in Dallas. Um, it's, it's solid attack. Um, Luster of Downfall doing 170 damage for just one energy attachment with double dragon energy. I mean, doing 170 damage as a one prize Pokemon for one attachment is really, really strong. Taking a look at both players' prizes here. Uh, computer search there. For, let's see, that's for Matt. Um, yeah, not a card you ever love to see prized. It's just a great consistency card, but it's not the worst thing in the world either. Once you take it out of your prize cards and it does look like it is at the bottom, of Matt's prizes. It's something that he can utilize mid to late game, which honestly could be even better for him than in the early game, potentially. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything backbreaking for either player. So here we go. We are off. It looks like Frank will be taking the first turn here. Yeah, and Frank starting that Blacephalon from Cosmic Eclipse, just one of the many toolboxy cards that Frank has access to. Of course, that can attack for just one energy with a Dimension Valley in play when your opponent's at exactly three prize cards, letting you spread 12 damage counters through the rest of the game, letting you spread four however you would like. Um, something you can really utilize in other one prize matchups. And we see uh, we saw Spell Tag over in his prizes. I think that Frank's deck is really going to aim to like spread damage around and take multiple prize turns potentially. Yeah, something Kyle and I talked about when we were just talking about kind of toolbox decks earlier on camera was that you really have to be prepared to say, okay, like how, I need to select a certain number of Pokemon that will let me win. And I need to, in order to do that, I need to predict the metagame pretty well. I need to understand, okay, I'm gonna play Blacephalon because I expect a lot of other one prize decks. And if you're right, which it seems like Frank and those guys have been, you'll be in a very good position. And if you're wrong, it can go really, really poorly for you. So one of the, one of the risks of playing this sort of toolbox type deck. Yeah, and really cool on Frank's side, we actually see that Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno hit the discard pile. The second time we've seen it. Yeah, in, uh, in a totally different deck. Um, and really a really unique way to utilize it here in this list. Uh, Frank is playing the Tapu Koko Prism Star, so he can get an energy accelerated onto it in that way. And then he has Counter Energy, which will provide the other two energy types. And then Dimension Valley gets rid of the colorless cost. So for just in one turn, you can power it up and start using that Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno, either of its attacks, either the first attack or utilizing the GX attack to do 110 to three different Pokemon. Yeah, so unlike the deck we saw it in earlier, it's this not exactly so all in on this kind of strategy. Um, it's just one of the many options this toolbox deck has, uh, but definitely a relevant one. We see the Mew you see on your screen now is, uh, or you see on the bench now rather, is really what's going to power all this. It's what Pokemon you'll be attacking through as we see a Dedenne for six fresh cards from Frank. He's finding six cards here. Don't see any other key cards he can use on this turn. We do see the Cramorant the hit the field though. And of course, not being able to play a supporter on the first turn, the Dene becomes one of the strongest ways to still see a good amount of cards. Yeah, much format, much more reliant on kind of quick ball into things like Shaman and Dene than it has been in the past. Matt here, gonna go ahead and play an Ultra Ball. Can start attacking on turn one, could even take a knockout here right away if he's able to find a bunch of cards like the Silent Lab and Floatstone pieces like that. Silent Lab actually gonna be probably a pretty key card in the matchup. Frank is gonna have to bump that with a Dimension Valley uh, if he wants to attack with Mew. Since Mew is a basic Pokemon, Memories of Dawn will be shut off by Silent Lab. And of course, Frank, you know, th these decks have to run the full four Dimension Valley, but right. so you get in this awkward situation where maybe you have to expose your Dimension Valley and then it gets bumped and the, the Stadium Wars can be a pretty big uh, back and forth here. Yeah, and even like late game finding it off of an N or something like that when, when you've already utilized several of them, that can be a big deal. Right away, Matt gonna get the Remoraid down. Yeah, trying to... Build up a little draw engine with the Octillery. So I know that the I know that Frank's deck is kind of a, a brand new creation, and I know that we haven't seen a whole lot of Ultra Necrozman expanded. But what do you, just looking at this, you know, base level, what do you think about the matchup? Where do you think things are headed here? 
Well, it is a one prize or mirror, so typically that would favor the player who takes the first prize, which we see Matt was unable to do, just having to go for a collect on wow. the Grimer. Um, but Frank's list is actually built in a way that he can take multiple prizes uh, with something like the Blacephalon, with something like the Bird Trio. Um, so really, realistically, I kind of would have to give the edge to, to Frank for that. Yeah, it seems like Frank... Um... It seems like he just has he has the ability to go over the top of both the single prize and oh, the wait. multiple prize deck. Frank could just win the game here. Does he have a second Moltres Zapdos Articuno? No, it doesn't look like it. No, just running the single copy there, unfortunately. But yeah, that, that type of Coco, the Mew. Yeah, if he you know got that energy acceleration, found the Dimension Valley. I mean, if he finds a rescue stretcher, he definitely could still realistically do it here. There's a Sycamore. Seven fresh cards. Or Frank can't can do is is the bird trio going to be what we? There's the rescue stretcher in Valley. Does he have a lightning energy though in the discard pile? I think he's got it if he doesn't have the light as long as he has a lightning energy. Looks like Frank's considering his options. We do see that dimension Valley. Looks like no, he's just going to go ahead and retreat up to the Mew. Gonna go ahead and spell tag as well. This is a really cool card in the list, letting him spread some damage and really utilizes that you know, the ability uh, to use things like Blacephalon later on in the game. Yeah, the, the, the spell tag, the Mew interaction, you just do, you do things for such little um, resources here as, right. we, we, as we see the uh, beat catch from the Cramorant. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, able to use it for free. It is a colorless attack and with Dimension Valley in play, doesn't even need an energy attached. Just going to let him search his deck for up to two cards and putting them into his hand. This is going to let Frank set up some big plays moving forward. Yeah, and remember, we, we just saw Matt you know, have to collect and pass last turn. He didn't really have much to put together, so his hands could still be just unplayable. Frank eyeing up a teammate. I like taking this card just in case your opponent does find the pieces to get a knockout um, off of the collect or something like that. So we do see Silent Lab as well as an Ultra Ball and a Float Stone. So Matt definitely has options here. It looks like he's going to decide what he wants to do with the Ultra Ball first. Rescue Stretcher and Soda Widow going away. Yes, yeah, so we see the light counter package in Matt's list, being able to have the option to utilize something like Pseudo Wudo with counter energy. Not really going to be too relevant, I feel like, in this matchup. I guess using, you know, copying Cramorant's attack to snipe some damage could be okay, but that would require two attachments to Pseudo Wudo and also require you to be behind on prizes. Um, so not super likely we'll see that be relevant. Yeah, not the match that's really in here for is we see that Ultra Ball get the Octillery. We're going to see an Ultra Necrozma as well. So this, this turn's turned out much better for him. Much better for Matt. It seems like he's really starting to set things up the way he wants it to be. Yeah, and I think those last two cards in hand are going to be the Floatstone and the Silent Lab. So uh, it looks like actually three cards in hand. So he'll thin his hand down very, very low and draw a good amount with Abyssal Hand. And all he needs at this point is going to be that Double Dragon Energy to start attacking. Yep, there's the Floatstone. There's a the Silent Lab. We just talked about how huge that was. Here's that Octillery. Five cards. No energy. He's not finding energy. He doesn't even find a Supporter. Nope, just some just a nest ball. Another silent lab. Nothing that's really going to help him get that far this turn, unfortunately. Yeah, really unfortunate start here from Matt. Um, not able to attack on either of these first two turns whenever your deck is really built to be able to start attacking every single turn. Uh, just really unfortunate to see that with. Yeah, just not even... Just really no options here. Again, he'll have to try to reset things next turn, but these two turns have just been so, so slow. Yeah. We might even just see another collect. Um, I mean, that's probably his best attack to utilize this turn. Uh, setting up a Lolan Muck, though, could be pretty huge since that would just turn off Mew for the rest of the game. That would force Frank to, you know, attach to something like Cramorant manually over the course of three turns to take the knockout, or two turns with a, a double colorless energy. And it looks like Matt ends up agreeing with you. He ends up retreating yep. the Grimer, just kind of keeping it safe and uh, promoting that Ultra Necrozma. Frank, being aware of the looming threat of Alolan Muck, does go ahead and start to power up the Cramorant. And looks like he'll choose to just go ahead and use Beak Catch with the Cramorant, as opposed to the Mew this time. Doesn't have the Stadium to bump the Silent Lab, so if he doesn't have a strong hand, that's his only option. And interesting that he chose not to take a Dimension Valley off of the Beak Catch last turn. Yeah, I don't, don't think that's a mistake he'll be making again this turn, although we do know that Matt does have the backup Silent Lab in hand. Mm -hmm. So just to really... Uh, not, both players not really gaining a lot of traction here. We thought after the, the first few kind of 
weaker turns by Matt that Frank would be able to get something together, but he didn't, didn't have the ability to go for that uh, bird trio, and now he just has to, you know, naturally promote the Cramoran attack. Yeah, Frank was in a really close to winning the game position, honestly, on the first turn, was really just missing one piece of the puzzle. Does only play a few lightning energies, so needs to find something like, you know, uh, Ultra Ball, Quick Ball to discard those pieces in order to even be able to utilize the Cocoa Prism and was not quite able to do it. Yeah, not quite. And you see what Matt can put together here. It's like a trainer's mail. He's gonna try to find, he really needs something that'll allow him to find you know, Dragon Energy, which it looks like he has. Yeah, Guzmahala, the perfect piece to find there off of the trainer's mail, honestly. He'll be able to discard the two cards remaining in his hand, find that stadium, uh, for the next turn, find the double dragon energy for this turn, can even get himself a tool out of the deck, and then still use Abyssal Hand to refill his hand. Yeah, so could not have asked for a better card there. Now we're going to actually see Matt's deck function, how it was supposed to, how I assume it has over these past seven rounds. Does have to discard another Silent Lab, which you don't love seeing hit the discard pile, but at the cost of not attacking this turn, it, it's definitely much more worthwhile to go ahead and get yourself an attack. Yeah, absolutely. You can also, again, always find another one, but right. again, that, that, that stadium back and forth is so important that you hate to see that. But you just, he has to advance his game plan here to that double dragon energy. I wonder if he'll even take something like the other Silent Lab uh, since he can't play it right away. He might want to increase his uh, uh, chances as much as possible to find the Alolan Muck here off of Abyssal Hand, and we see he chooses not to take that other stadium, wants to draw the full five. Yeah, heads, heads up play by Matt for sure. Just not, not being worried about what might happen in the future. He knows that this mug is so, so important to the, the game plan. And he does find it. Yeah, is able to get there. The Fighting Fury Belt, actually a pretty good card here for, Frank, um, for Matt as well. Meaning that, you know, it's more difficult for Frank to set up, you know, some shenanigans with the Fireworks Bomb. Uh, since it does give the Pokemon more HP. But that muck, Power of Alchemy, is honestly just huge for this matchup. Yeah, but basically before anything else can happen, we uh, Frank for Frank, he needs a deal with this muck, mm -hmm. um, which will, I guess he can um, snipe it with the Cramorant. He has, some, he has some things he can do, but that's just, a, it's going to disrupt his entire game plan. A really important piece here is the Luster of Downfall does discard an energy from the Cramorant. Now, Frank not able to just attack this turn because it does require, you know, two attachments with double colorless plus one more colorless energy. And with his bench locked up as well. Yeah, he, he just might be too, falling too far behind here. Yeah, this is a tough spot, honestly. Um, Cramorant does have 200 hit points, so able to tank a hit at least. But, I mean, you can beak catch to set some stuff up. I mean, Frank has also had two turns of uninterrupted beak catch, but hasn't been able to do too much with them. Yeah, still just hasn't been enough, unfortunately. And I almost wonder if, like, you know, Frank just kind of made the wrong call off of the beak catch, thinking like his opponent was going to go one way. And then like we saw him take the teammates the first turn, his opponent didn't get a knockout. Right. And then that meant that Frank's next turn was weak because he, you know, spent one of those two cards finding a teammates. And he does have the Dimension Valley now, but not exactly going to work out great for him. Here comes the quick ball. I don't think, yeah, Frank does play the one copy of Stealthy Hood, which could be useful on one of these Mews. Um, so if he can find that and throw it down to this benched Mew that doesn't have a tool on it already and find a way to move the Cramorant, um, then we could see him take, uh, you know, Beak Shot just knock out this Alolan Muck right away. But no, it, he just takes the Bird Trio and passes, it looks like. We're back to Matt, and wow, he, Matt had such a, such a bad start, didn't really do anything at all, and Frank could not capitalize, and now he's just being locked on the, to, because of this mug. And we will see that in Frank has had a couple of turns to build up a pretty good-sized hand, so this is the perfect time to be playing an in, right? Whenever your opponent, uh, when you're about to be taking a two-prize knockout, you're still going to get the full effect, finding six cards, and you know you're disrupting the beak catch from your opponent. Yeah, absolutely. Six six fresh cards for each player, and I think Matt just really just needs to keep pressing this advantage here. Um, Frank is going to need a, to put a lot together. Of course, you know we're both players are still at six prizes. There's still a lot of game left to be played, but for unfortunately, sure. Frank just had such a hard time executing his game plan as long as that muck is on the board. Yeah, and we we did talk about how you know Frank does have a little bit more, you know, 
play around potential with his list, um, you know, being able to spread damage with things like the spell tags, but Field Blower, a pretty big card, uh, gets rid of a spell tag, and Matt choosing to leave uh, the float... Oh, no, he does get rid of the Dimension Valley there. Yeah, just leaving the float stone. Can't really do much about that. Yeah. And there's a knockout. No more Cramorant. Floatstone does allow Frank to have kind of a free retreat here, but he already has that in the Mew, so it's not really doing anything. I think we're going to need to see Frank find that stealthy hood he plays. That's going to be pretty important for him here. He does have the one Guzma Hala, so that's a way he could find it. Yeah, I mean, I just don't see what Frank can really, how he can really interact without um, that stealthy hood. A really important card for Frank's deck is teammates. We saw him take it earlier on in the game, but wasn't able to get it into the discard pile. So just has to go for Sycamore here, where normally using teammates to find the specific cards would have been put him in a much better spot. Frank not Frank really just, sure. Yeah, it looks like it looks like his body language is just a, a lot of frustration, really unsure what to do to kind of get ahead here. I can use watch and learn with Pseudo Wudo. This will pick up the KO. Um, Normally, Pseudo-Widow included to knock out things like Snorlax VMAX, but comes up pretty big here in this matchup, taking out the Ultra Necrozma. And we do see the knockout here. Olin Muck becomes active on Matt's side. Matt with a computer search in hand. Seems like his hand is totally fine to be able to respond here. Just needs to, again, not expose that Olin Muck. Just trying to try to keep Frank off of Stealthy Hood or a way of dealing with the Muck for as long as possible and hopefully just grind out the rest of this game. Yeah, it does have that computer search. We saw it prized. He was able to take it, so perfect time, honestly, to find it. And also has teammates. Going to choose to discard it, but that is a great you know, card that he could utilize this turn. We also talked a little bit about how both of these decks are playing single prize attackers and kind of initiating a prize trade, but of course that Cramorant is a V. It is worth two prizes. So Matt is not only ahead on the board, kind of locking Frank out, but also ahead on prizes, so he has a little bit of room to give if something goes wrong. Frank has left only, um, well, just the Dedenne in play. So I guess something that Matt could try to do would be playing around um, the Fireworks Bomb turn from Frank by finding a Guzma or something on Dedenne here. And he does eye up the Great Catcher. That's exactly what he's opting for. This means that Frank won't get that extra damage spread with Fireworks Bomb. So really a great scenario. Yeah, a great place to be. If you're Matt, Frank knows exactly what's going on here. Matt's you know, playing very well, just kind of realizing that he's ahead, but just can't, he can't afford to make any mistakes still. He does find, uh, still has a via Seeker in his hand, has not played a supporter yet. Um, so we could see him grab that teammates back that he discarded earlier on if he wants to utilize that. I think just getting another Ultra Necrozma down, putting an energy on it could be good, making yourself a little more in proof later on in the game. Of course, Octillery already does a great job of that. Um, but yeah. A stream of attackers is just important here. This is the sure. something you'll see with these one prize decks is that they're not so much in this situation exactly, but you'll see their attackers getting knocked out back and forth and back and forth. And it can often be the first person to, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't find the didn't find my attacker. I just have to pass. That actually just loses the game for them. Sonic Lab could be a big card here for Matt as well, but it looks like he is gonna opt for via Seeker. And what cards will he find here? Again, I think he just needs to uh, up his consistency again. Like you said earlier, make himself a little bit of a little bit more end proof. Yeah, could even find like Nest Ball since that's a card you wouldn't want to draw, as opposed to just getting the Ultra Necrozma. If you just get Nest Ball, that takes that two cards out of the deck effectively. Right, thinning your deck as much as possible, preventing taking out all the cards you don't want to draw, so that if things go wrong for you, you can have the highest percentage of drawing live cards that will actually win you the game. Actually opts for a VS Seeker as well, so setting himself up for the future turn. So if Frank doesn't play an in, he knows he's got teammates on the next turn. He has a double dragon too, removes the Dimension Valley. And I think getting Silent Lab here is actually really big. Frank has played a couple of Dimension Valleys, and that uh, Silent Lab does, it, you know, Stealthy Hood does not prevent Silent Lab, right? It would prevent the muck, but right. now Frank needs to find not only Stealthy Hood, but also the, uh, the counter to the Silent Lab in order to attack with a Mew. And so Matt really just burying Frank here, saying, okay, you know, you, you, you have a, you know, your, your deck's great, you have, 
you know, clearly been successful. The Mews are, you know, powered up and strong, but you just can't really act unless you deal with multiple things here. Target was still a pretty cute card we've seen a lot of this weekend. Sudowoodo, not something that's going to be useful for Matt, so Frank just wants to clog the bench as much as possible, I think, here. Yeah, another spell tag on the Mew for Frank. There's the bird trio hitting the bench. Not quite sure if he wants to put it down yet. Uh, he's got a Sycamore in hand, and I believe he's already used Rescue Stretcher, so by putting it in the discard pile, I don't think he's going to have access to it the rest of the game. Ultimately decides not to bench it, just play the Sycamore. Seven new cards. You did see a Cramorant, a bunch of energies in there, but I don't, I'm not sure if there's anything that really gets him out of this position. Did draw the Dimension Valley. Yeah, Dimension Valley could be useful here, and it looks like he'll just opt to put a Cramorant down and go ahead and start getting the energy on it for the future turns. Watch and Learn, still able to pick up the knockout, but now he's in a situation where one more energy attachment can take out the Alolan Muck and he can have access to his Muse later on. Looks like he did draw the Stealthy Hood off the prizes too, Ooh. off the prize rather. It was prized, so that's why we haven't seen it from him yet, and that's gonna be good for him moving forward. And action's back on Matt now, of course. Ultra Necrozma did go down. He has another one with the Double Dragon energy already. Ready to go. A lot of options in his hand versus Seeker, a bunch of supporters. The world is kind of his oyster here. He's got a Guzma here, and I feel like using Guzma to take the energy off of the Cramorant could be huge, honestly. Uh, getting rid of this double colorless energy makes it much more difficult for um, Frank to get off a relevant attack on the next turn, and no, ma makes it so that your muck is much more likely to be safe. Yeah, that that's kind of has to be the name of the game still, even though, you know, we, we know it's in Frank's hand. We know what, what he's working with here. You have to, if you're Matt, you just have to try to, again, protect, protect this silent lab, protect this mug, do everything you can to uh, ensure that your game plan keeps, uh, it is uninterrupted. We see a teammate here. I didn't quite see what he, what he grabbed, but teammate's a really relevant card in these kind of back and forth consistent knockout decks. Yeah, and Matt did something really smart last turn by teammatesing for a VS Seeker, giving himself the option to continue to chain teammates turn after turn, really heads up and lets him, uh, you know, just continue the stream of attackers, like you said, and does go ahead and get an Ultra Necrozma with an energy, leaving himself two attackers, which should line up his two prizes he needs to win the game. Yeah, very, just very clean. Uh, tight play here, just not, you know, Matt has had the game plan going in, he executed it perfectly, and that's, uh, leaves him with a single prize left versus Frank's four. And Frank is in a tough spot, and yeah, we yeah, will just see the seats. concession. I mean, he could bring up Cramorant, get an energy on it, you know, take a snipe knockout on one of these benched Pokemon, but, and then combine it with an N and hope that's enough, but even then, I, I think this is a situation where you just have to accept I'm probably going to lose this game. My best play here is to concede and hope that I can win a game two and three. Yeah, and the unfortunate thing for Frank there, you know, besides just straight up losing the game, is that he was never, I think, until that last turn in a position where he should have conceded. A lot of yeah. times you'll see players, you know, maybe he, he, Frank should have conceded 10 minutes ago to save time. But with with him just needing to kind of put together the like, the, you know, I need an energy, I need to draw a hood, I need to draw a Dimension Valley, whatever. It's He's always just like a turn or two away from swinging things back in his direction. And so unfortunately for Frank, Matt takes, the first game and you know there's still still a lot of time left in the round but things did not go well for frank one thing about frank uh, he's a long time player very successful player always is coming up with uh new innovative decks and he there's kind of this constant running running joke about other players will succeed with his deck <laughs> he'll come up with something and you know he'll he'll lose his win and then and you know his friend will win the entire turn right and we something. we saw that same thing happen in dallas right uh hunter butler was very quick to give credit to frank for the success that he found in Dallas winning with his Roxy Chomp deck in the expanded format. Really a new and innovative deck that Frank was kind of the mastermind behind. Hunter was able to take it to a first place victory. I believe Hunter is actually playing this same deck as well this weekend. So the same kind of crew coming together and finding these unique, um, really fun and cool uh, strategies. And now Frank uh, here in a position where he can win, get himself into day two and hopefully make a deep run. Yeah, Frank, Frank is trying to put together a run here, but of course Matt is just a little bit closer as he, uh, he you know, won game one and just needs to win one more game throughout this match to make day two. So it might, you know, the curse might still be on Frank. Can he actually get there? He does have a little bit of work to do. In Frank's prizes, we actually saw the uh, Evil Tall GX, a really interesting inclusion um, with a spell tag 
after a knockout, you can use that to pick up a clean one hit KO on something like a, you know, more Pico V Max or Snorlax V Max, one of these big three prize Pokemon. Not something I'm sure we'll see in this matchup, but a really unique inclusion in the list as well. Yeah, just just a great way to be able to say, okay, whatever it is, I'm taking this knockout here. Maybe I, maybe you know, I don't have the right cards to put things together exactly how I want them to be, but I can just immediately respond. And Fr Frank is just, you know, a, a great player, a great deck builder. I mean, M Matt is clearly playing. Uh, you know, played really tight in that match. It's just a, a great back and forth match and whoever wins it will be a, a welcome addition to day two here in Collinsville. Absolutely. And we actually saw a situation in that first game where Matt used collect on turn one with Alolan Grimer. And that was a really big opening looking back at things for Frank to capitalize, take a knockout, uh, deal with that Grimer before it has the chance to become a muck. Right away, I think Matt realized the importance of Alolan Muck by retreating it on the next turn, not using collect the second time. Um, but kind of a situation where um, you know, Frank didn't get rewarded by his opponent going for that play and yeah. was missed the knockout and then Matt was able to just capitalize and sweep through the game. Well, it's really important on, on Matt's side of that to not not get discouraged, you know, not go on tilt as they say and just sure. like, okay, well, I have to collect on turn one. I, I'm probably going to lose, but if things go right and Frank misses and the top of my deck is nice to me, I'm going to win. And that's, that's what happened. Um, and so it's really important to just kind of play tight and make, make sure that you're not giving up any value. So I believe we did see three mulligans on Matt's side. So Frank will get three additional cards to start this game. Um, really big difference between starting the game with you know six cards in hand and nine cards. Uh, it's going to leave a lot more options. And once again, computer search in the prizes. <laughs> All right, and we are off now. Looks like Astuto Widow is facing Dan a Cramorant. Matt is going first. Yeah, so interesting choice here. Frank chose to go second, and I think that kind of what we've talked about in these one-prize matchups, getting the first knockout is huge. And, um, you know, Matt's able to slow Frank down potentially with a Silent Lab, but looks like Frank's already got the answer to it. Yeah, and that was Matt's only play as well, just yeah. Silent, Silent Lab pass, of course, cannot play supported due to the new first turn rule, doesn't have any energy. We do see he has an Octillery in hand for next turn, but now we're on Frank, he has a... Cameron, he has the Guzman Hall, it looks like. Coming down here, trying to decide what to discard. Yeah, this will get him that Dimension Valley. So he can bump the Silent Lab. Also can find him like a Float Stone if he wants to move this active Cameron, or a Spell Tag if he wants to throw it down onto a Mew. I'm not sure if he had an attacker in his hand though, so we'll have to see if he has like a Quick Ball uh, or just one of the Mews in his hand to, to start attacking right away. Yeah, Frank taking advantage of being able to, you know, he's going second, he can play a supporter, he can potentially get a knockout. We do see the combination of Spell Tag, Dimension Valley, and Double Colorless Energy. Uh, getting rid of this Silent Lab will be huge. We saw a lot of tension around that in the first game. And there's a lot more where that came from, but being kind of one up on the trade there, we do see that Quick Ball that you mentioned. So now Frank will be able to find an attacker and kind of just build up his board how he wants. Yeah, and I did see the Float Stone in his hand as well. So Cramorant can get moved to the bench and right away we'll see a Spit Shot taking a knockout and Frank will be awarded with the first prize of this game. Already so much better of a start. And I feel like he's got to target down that Remoraid here. Yeah, I think when your opponent just does, does nothing in pass, obviously they could just have a supporter and that, right. that's tough for you. But I think getting rid of, traditionally the, the, the kind of line of play would be get rid, getting rid of the support Pokemon here. And it looks like that is what Frank is going to do. He, he realizes that he takes the first prize, the first knockout, and things are going exactly how he wanted, essentially. Matt here is going to draw for turn. Looks like he does have a supporter. Oh, he's got the nest ball in hand at least, so he can get another Pokemon out. Um, but yeah, it's like one of the situations, like you said, you don't know if your opponent truly does have a bad hand or if just the new supporter room rule kind of messed him up. Yeah, it looks like Guzman and Hala is coming down. That Octillery, so, so Matt did have the Octillery to evolve in Ooh. and kind of start drawing cards for this turn, but unfortunately that memory is no more. And the Field Blower goes away. Field Blower card we saw become relevant last time. Yeah, Guzma Hala here going to find exactly what Frank needs. Gets him that Floatstone to move this active Pokemon. Silent Lab will turn off the ability from Ultra Necrozma, and Double Dragon provides the energy needed. These three cards here, perfect. Exactly what he wants to find. Yeah, just the Guzman Hall has just been so strong. I mean, it's, it's a strong card in general, but this weekend, especially these past few rounds, we've seen it just do so much work for all of these players. 
And that spit shot taking the knockout on Rim Raid becomes much more impactful now as well because, as we see, Matt had the Octillery. If he was able to Guzman Hala and fill his hand back up with Abyssal Hand, he'd be in a really solid spot. As it is, though, I, I think he's got this Nest Ball and a VS Seeker and no other supporters in his discard pile besides Guzman Hala. Yeah, he's basically just kind of resetting things, I guess. He's just saying, you know, I'm getting rid of your Dimension Valley. I'm kind of trying to lock you out again, but he's not really making a ton of headway. Sure. We do see the nest ball come down. And I find that Grimer. Yeah, I think uh, another interesting choice here from Matt was discarding the Octillery as opposed to like the VS Seeker in his hand. Uh, if he keeps the Octillery and can nest ball for second Remoraid here potentially, that uh, you know means on the next turn he can draw with Abyssal Hand. Uh, but I actually think looking in his prizes that it uh, that second Remoraid could have definitely been prized. And so leaving himself the option, and he will get a prize here from this knockout. And we do see Double Dragon, Silent Lab. There's the, there's the attack, there's the prize. And again, Frank, you know, left with, with a, um, without much on the board, with, he needs to get rid of the Silent Lab in order to kind of make any headway. Just a really, really back and forth engagements, even if a lot is not really happening from either player's side. Yeah, I think, ooh, Frank almost benches a Tapu Lele. Can't utilize that right now with the Silent Lab in play. But I think, um, you know, Guzmahal is kind of a double-edged sword, right? It's great. It finds you exact pieces you need. Oh, Frank actually can't utilize that oh. Lele. Yeah, it looks like, wow, it looks Ooh. like he just missed that a bit. I'm sure it was just a mistake by Frank, but... Yeah. Unfortunately, commits that type of Lele to the board as well, so now it's just going to stuck there doing nothing. Yeah, once it's been benched, there it is. Don't get to utilize that ability. I mean, he can energy drive, I guess, but... <laughs> yeah, not, not exactly where he wants to be. Yeah, tough spot. Looks like Frank considering what to do now. Look, look like players having a conversation with the judge, just kind of saying, yeah, you know, I didn't know. Yeah. I just forgot. Not, not trying to gain edge or anything like that, I'd expect. Maybe a penalty assessed. I'm not really sure how that works with i know it's like frank saw some of the cards it's yeah i'm sure the judges will handle this swiftly yeah he was still he was in the process of a deck search he hadn't even shuffled his deck from the last search so i don't think that any like penalty would be awarded in this instance but certainly a warning potentially could come out and yeah. um it looks like we're just going to go yeah. ahead and continue play here versus seeker finds guzma Hala, getting rid of counter energy and eveltal and now again we're seeing that kind of we we need to keep streaming uh, this, these Guzmahalas to, in order to find the stadiums, in order to find the energy, and kind of who, who will blink first. Yeah, and Spit Shot here should be targeting that Alolan Grimer. I think Frank wants to deal with that before Alolan Muck becomes a threat. And so already a much better position, but this is kind of what I was saying before uh, the issue with the Lele came up, is that Guzmahala, while it finds you exact pieces when you need it, it really doesn't... Um, it really doesn't advance your board state in uh, any way. Like, you you don't increase your hand size with something like a Sycamore. Right. You don't get to find exact pieces with, like, teammates to set up for next turn. It's You're limited to what you can find. Right, exactly. And it does look like uh, Frank got a two-prize card penalty um, for that illegal search. Again, he sure. did look at, you know, he saw cards in his deck. Um, don't think it was intentional, but that was the ruling, just so we can follow along at home. As we go to Matt's turn now, after, again, as you uh, accurately predicted, that... Grimer is gone. And Matt's left with a pretty weak hand. We know he has the VS Seeker. Oh, wait, no, is there a Juniper there? I uh, can't quite make out the cards in Matt's hand. He's kind of torn on what to do, I think. He's got special charge in hand. He does have the Juniper. Yeah, and so I think he's in a situation where he's like, should I just Guzma and Hala and get myself guaranteed pieces, like find the stadium? He could actually just use Guzma Hala for the first effect, doesn't even have to, you know, discard cards. Right. Could just guarantee himself the Silent Lab so that he can get off the attack this turn. Because um, now things are uh, different for Matt, right? Um, you, you hate to see a prize penalty at any point in the game, but it's how it happened, and now Matt needs to take two less prizes. Um, you know, his game plan definitely can change from this. Yeah, so again, Matt's just, so you can see on your screen, Matt's prizes are still out. You know, he doesn't get to take prizes. He just needs to take two fewer to win the game. And so like you said, that, cha that just changes so much. We've been talking about the prize trade all, you know, all match, and now it's just completely different. And he does decide to go for kind of the more conservative play and say, you know what, I can, I can Juniper next turn for now. I just want to try and shut you down and take these prizes quickly. And does hang on to the Juniper by doing this, um, like you said. Finding that stadium is really the only piece he needed this turn to get a knockout, so it's going to work out perfectly. 
Yeah, absolutely. He doesn't just. I, I, I've been impressed with Matt's kind of consistent sort of um, conservative play throughout this entire match. And what was Frank's draw for turn? He's just going to attach to Cramorant here. If he has to just use Beak Catch, that's so slow. And uh, with the prize penalty, it's going to put him in a really tough spot. Yeah, I don't really think he has much going on. He just immediately attaches and uses Beak Catch. Think, thinks for maybe half a second and then just has to has to do it here. And if you're Matt, you have to be so excited. You only need to take uh, two more prizes, you know, one more big knockout on any of these Vs or, or GXs, and it's over. Yeah, and it's such a frustrating misstep from Frank as well because he did have Guzmahala with the VS Seeker. Um, I think maybe he just kind of like missequenced, like he knew what he wanted to do. He knew he wanted to use Guzmahal to find the pieces, bump the stadium, use the Lele before his opponent could counter the stadium once right. again. And that's just, he just kind of got a little mixed up and a little out of order. Yeah, that, that can definitely happen. Like yeah. that, that's something, I mean, I don't, I don't think that Frank was trying to gain any advantage clearly. Oh, sure. You know, he's on camera. He knows what he's, his opponent knows what's up. He just, uh, it's so easy to just kind of miss sequence what you're doing, play the wrong card. And suddenly the game shifts entirely. So Frank with just a beak catch, finding two cards. Matt gonna have a, another turn to just kind of push his advantage here. Uh, with only two prizes left, all he has to do is knock out. Oh wait, he should just have game, right? Yeah, it looks like he has the computer search. Yeah, all he needs is a Guzma here. Have or to, to find like a great catcher off the Juniper. I couldn't see what he ended up computer searching for, but I know he did get rid of the juniper off the computer search it looks like yep with just i mean maybe kind of just a unsure situation um and he is going to go ahead and field blower away that floatstone and juniper having a second one in hand will draw him more cards let's see does he find a great catcher though he does not looks like a Look trainer's, trainer's mail. mails and finds himself a couple of cards, no great catcher though. Looks like a nest ball could be a good option here. Just get another Necrozma in play, um, or even Stretcher could do that. Looks like he's just trying to stream maybe a, a slight misstep here uh, from Matt, but just didn't, didn't see the play and is now just trying to set up for future turns again, just one knockout away from taking this game and this match. Yeah, and I, with an Ultra Ball in hand, maybe we'll see him go grab the Rimmeraid to try to set himself up with some more consistent draw through the game. Um, and, of course, Luster of Downfall will discard this double color synergy, like we mentioned, so Beak Shot not going to be a uh, huge threat from Frank. That's the Ultra Ball. And take the Rimmeraid, as you said, to shuffle it back in off of the um, Rescue Stretcher. Yeah, and this is, you know, going to make him, you know, improve something like that um, if, you know, Frank tried to disrupt his hand. Ooh, was ops it? for the Grimer. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe trying to play a little bit of a longer game. Again, the Alolan Mox Silent Lab is just kind of a hard, not a hard lock as Frank can get out of it, but it's a very tough lock for Frank to get around. But right. I, I got to imagine the Remoraid there just would have been a little bit safer of a play. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how... This, I'm not sure if this game is going to go very long, although maybe maybe Matt just wants to say, okay, if things go horribly wrong for me, I still have an advantage here. Sure. 170 damage onto Cramorant. Energy has been discarded. And, I mean, Frank, he's got to play it out, right? I mean, he's in a situation where if he loses, um, you know, he loses the match. So you got to play it out and just hope for something to go your way. But he is in such a tough spot. And it looks like he might just have to commit energy to retreating this turn. Uh, so he's going to need to find, like, a Dimension Valley to use Beak Catch with one of these Mews. Yeah, well, so that's, that's what he did. He just attached. He played the Sycamore. He does. He did find the Dimension Valley. Uh, didn't quite get a look at what else was in his hand. But, yeah, Frank just not. Things not coming together for Frank this match, unfortunately. Yeah, and I mean, he has the Stealthy Hood in hand. Not something he can utilize right now, but that could be good. Moving forward, if Matt does find the Alolan Muck. Um, <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, all Matt needs to close this out is going to be a Guzma or Great Catcher. And we do see, again, we talked a little bit about how Matt, you know, using kind of in the early turns, not having a great hand, using Collect, just kind of trying to stay focused on 
whatever potential you have to win. This is even 10 times more true for Frank here as he's very, very close to losing, but still has to think about it, play correctly, and just play to that, you know, 2%, 5%, 10%, whatever it happens to be chance that you can actually pull off this game. Yeah, and that's something that separates, you know, good players from great players. Um, even if you're in such a bad spot, being able to identify those, you know, even half a percent lines that could eventually exactly. win you the game, you've got to play to that. And, you know, maybe something will go your way. Like, there's always a chance, right? And, um, you know, if you're telling Frank there's a chance, he's going to stick in it and see if he can find the lines to get the win. And he's taking a lot of time here just considering Zach, what exactly do I want? Again, there's only a few, you know, combinations of cards that can actually get me out of this. So I need to just take these cards, cross my fingers, and hope that it's not all over for me. And finding two cards, Matt does draw a trainer's mail. Immediately plays a silent lab to get rid of that Dimension Valley. And let's see if this can find a Guzma. Does not. Does not find a uh, du double dragon, two artillery, and a rescue stretcher. Neither of those cards are going to really do anything for him here. Yeah, maybe could take the rescue stretcher just to not draw it. If he wants to like push his advantage here, take a prize, knows that maybe the rescue stretcher is not going to matter too much moving forward in the game, but ops will just go ahead and put it back in the deck. Yeah, not even bothering to take it here, just saying I'm, I'm so close. I just needed that rescue stretcher to find something relevant. And I think with a VS Seeker as his last card in hand, we'll likely just see another Juniper discarding the hand to fill it up to seven. You have to imagine that this is the plan at this point. There's a Versus Seeker. Going to go ahead and show Frank the Juniper. And draw fresh seven cards. Yeah, no high five from either of the players. We, we won't hold it against them, though. Yeah, we're not, we're not exactly at that stage, unfortunately. Yeah, I guess so. considering the situation, that's fair. Um, Alolan Muck, though, is a pretty big find. That's going to shut down the Memories of Dawn ability on the Muse. And that's just even more Frank has to deal with. Double Dragon Energy, ensuring that Matt can kind of stream these uh, Ultra Minocrosmas. Ooh, Great Catcher actually in the prizes for Matt, so not able to find it. And, I mean, Matt only needs one more prize to win the game. I don't know what Frank can do. Yeah, this is very likely the last turn that Frank will be able to play here. Just one more prize, and it's all over. Yeah, there's no, like, enhanced hammer in his list. Maybe if he went enhanced hammer plus, you know, knock out the active plus N, he could make something happen, but... Yeah, he just but, uh, doesn't even have that option. Yeah, I mean, this deck, this deck has a lot of options. You know, Frank is an amazing player. I'm not, yeah. not going to call it now, but I just, I'm, not, sure. I'm not sure. I think he just might be too far behind. I'm not sure what he can put together here, especially with five prizes remaining. You know, it's not just like he has to survive through this turn. It's, he has to actually make relevant plays and not lose a single Pokemon for the rest of the game. Yeah. I mean, Matt is at exactly three prize cards remaining, so Fireworks Bomb is active, but that can only deal with one of these Pokemon. And it looks like it just, I can't quite make out the cards in Frank hand, Frank's hand, but I'm afraid it's not going to be enough. It looks like he did draw the Blacephalon. I mean, does he have anything in his list that can, like, paralyze the active? I don't think so. Like, maybe he could, you know, go for a m multiple heads, maybe. But it's just, um, just really not going to come together here for Frank, I don't think. He's got the counter energy plus Blacephalon, so... That's a play he's got available to him. And also, Dowsing Machine does open up his options as far as what's in his discard pile. And you can see Frank really thinking through this. Just, you know, he's got to know that he's not in a great spot. He's got to know that things are kind of hanging on a very, very loose thread here. But again, going to try to play as tight as he can. Going to try to write the, make the right decisions. It's just, it's just really a question of whether there is a play he can make that will leave him you know, not just not just uh, game on board for Matt. Right. I mean, he does find the Dimension Valley, so he needed that piece to be able to attack this turn. He does have Stealthy, which does block Mew from being affected by Power of Alchemy. Needed to find the Stadium here so that he could replace Silent Lab because Stealthy Hood does not prevent that. Yeah, so that's step one for Frank. He's got a Counter Energy in hand. Um, could use Fireworks Bomb with the Mew or the Blacephalon, either one at this point. Spread 12 damage counters however he would like. I mean, maybe if he could have combined this with, like, a Guzma, brought up the Muck, but, yeah. Oh, okay, so here's an out. Frank takes out this Muck. Now Matt needs to find a Silent Lab. So Muck down. There's a teammate's in his hand. 
I don't know. It depends on how many Silent Labs Matt has gone through at this point. He did have to discard one earlier on with a Guzma and Hala. And if, I mean, wait, this could be it, though. If Frank can get multiple turns of Fireworks Bomb off, um, of course, the, the ability here on the Necrozma is what is preventing Matt from just being able to attack for the win. Its ability reads that as long as your opponent has more than two prize cards, this Pokemon can't attack. The Ultra Burst ability, as we see there on screen. Um, so with Frank being at four, that can't attack yet. And Matt might be down a lot of those resources. Yeah, Frank might be piecing something together here. I mean, and I mean, let's see, one, two, three, four. There are four Silent Labs in the discard pile, as well as that Dowsing Machine. Wait, I think Frank Wait, has so found a way. No, no more access to Silent Lab here. Wait, no. Does he... I think Frank just wins this ultimately. As long as he doesn't take a prize and activate counter energy, Frank can just spread damage with Fireworks Bomb and then um, eventually take, you know, four knockouts in one turn. Just, yeah, just get, get to a point where he's spreading without actually taking the knockouts until the final turn. I think Frank may have found the line here. We were almost counting it out, and like we said, that half of a percent play, Frank found the line, and he's put himself in a position here where this is not over. Yeah, this is not over at all. We do see a teammate from Matt. Did not quite see what was taken there, but we'll see if this Matt can actually put things together here. He does take the counter energy, so he's kind of saying, okay, I know... If I'm going to win this game, it's going to be through that counter energy. But yeah, he just has to pass back. Oh my gosh, and all Frank needs to do is not take a prize. He needs to spread damage around with Fireworks Bomb and set it up to where he takes all four of these remaining prizes in one turn. He could definitely lose the game still if he was to, like, you know, take a knockout here and take a knockout on the next turn, giving your opponent... Oh, he does take out the Rimmerade here. I guess as long as you don't go behind on prizes, this is okay. Um, but you don't ever want to give your opponent an out to counter energy. Right, so there's there's a knockout 60 on the Sudo Widow. Frank crawling back here, only three prizes remaining. This will mean Frank needs to find a, a different energy to attack with the Mew next turn, needs to find either a Prism or um, something like that. Yeah, it would have to be a prism, one of his two Prism energies in order to attack with Fireworks Bomb, since counter is now just a colorless energy since these players are tied on prizes. And Matt just has to pass. Has to pass. All right. Well, this Frank Frank really turned this around here. He saw he found the found the Blissephalon, saw the play, just you know realized what he needed to do. I gotta believe he has access to the uh, Prism Energy if he put himself in that position. Yeah. We will see Quick Ball. There's one in the deck. At least one. I think there is two in the deck, so he needs to find it here off of something like a Sycamore, or if he has like a Guzma and Hala in hand, that can find the piece right away. Decides to go for a Tapu Koko Prism Star. I mean, honestly, like, this is a situation where, I mean, as, oh, Frank can't attack right now. We need to make sure we catch that because he is not behind on prizes anymore. Yeah, things are actually tied uh, up. Matt's going to go ahead and concede that game. Uh, I think Frank, you know, ultimately would win the game by just using, I mean, I think he did have a Via Seeker in his hand and Guzma Hall in the discard pile, so he did just need to find that Prism Energy. Yeah. Um, but a situation where Frank was ultimately going to win the game. Yeah, so well, that that was quite that was quite a back and forth game. Uh, there, we we really did not think Frank had many outs, but he actually found it. He did turn off the Ultra Necros Man, was able to was able to uh, take the game eventually. So, again, Frank could not attack that last turn because of the counter energy. Things are tied on prizes, but it didn't actually ultimately end up mattering. You know, Matt couldn't really make any headway either, and we are tied one one. Yeah, what a game! I mean. Frank, it seemed like things were just going terribly for him. He lost game number one. Game number two, he gets that prize penalty. His opponent only needs his opponent only needs to take one more prize to win the game. But Frank, getting taking note of those resources already used, saw all four dimension values were in the discard pile. Or excuse me, Silent Labs saw that the dowsing machine was down already and found the line, stuck his Dimension Valley in play, and knew that his opponent did not have a counter stadium. And as long as Muck was able to stay out of play, Frank was going to be able to win. And regardless of what, what deck you're rooting for, what player you're rooting for, whatever, it's great to see that that um, prize penalty will ultimately not come up. You know, I'm sure it was not intentional, intentional by Frank, and I'm glad that it didn't cost anyone a game. And we're just getting to see kind of, you know, good old fashioned back and forth Pokemon to, just, to determine who makes it into day two here in Collinsville. So an interesting thing here is going to be Matt gets to choose. Does he want to go first or second? We saw Frank lost game one and chose to go second. Do you think Matt would opt for the same type of strategy? Uh, I, I think it I think it just really depends. It looks like 
Uh, he he is choosing to go second. Yeah, Frank Frank is going first. Yeah, and I think that just kind of speaks to what we were talking about with the prize trade, these single prize matchups. Um, players really wanting to capitalize as quickly as possible by attacking on turn one. But in Matt's prizes, we actually did see two Silent Labs. Yeah, I was just going to mention we did see two, two Silent Labs. So if this game ends up going um, going along, if this game ends up being a grind fest, it will, unfortunately. Uh, Matt will not have that advantage. However, there are only two minutes left. I do believe players have a minute time extension. Okay. Um, as well, due to the penalty that was assessed, you know, that the judges have to take some time and talk, and we wouldn't want to penalize players for that. But it's going to be tough uh, for either player to really finish here, although we could see some big explosive uh, bird trio play from Frank like we almost saw in game one. Yeah, I mean, and that's probably going to be it. Um, Frank didn't get an energy attachment this turn, so that makes it a little more difficult. But um, if he's behind on prizes, we know that's a play that he can pull off in one turn. And so we see Ultra Charisma is a starter here for Matt. And we see a Nest Ball get the Remoraid. Kind of the classic play here. You just really want to make sure you have those Remoraids to turn to Octillaries later in the game. Hope Frank does not knock them out as he did in game two. And that's kind of the Octillery engine is what kind of just makes you be able to play the game and be consistent throughout. Matt does have the Silent Lab in hand. That is huge. After prizing two, still able to find one in his opening hand, exactly what he wanted to see. Looks like he did have the Guzma Hala, so he would have had that option still regardless to find the stadium. But this means that he's able to play Juniper for turn and hopefully find himself more Pokemon so that he doesn't risk, you know, getting knocked out immediately by a bird trio. There's a second Ultra Necrozma just, again, setting up that stream of attackers we've been talking about all game. Another Nest Ball. So things, I mean... T you know, time issues notwithstanding, things are going well for Matt. This is kind of the setup that he wants to see early in the game here. Yeah, and I feel like if time is called in, you know, this turn or next turn, uh, things will likely end in a tie for us, uh, you know, which wouldn't necessarily eliminate either player. They can still, you know, get a win in their ninth round in order to make it into day two. Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, Obviously, one player just wants to win here. They want to lock it up and make day two. Ty would not be the worst thing in the world. It's not what other player wants to see. But unfortunately, I think they're both in a position where they just have to accept it. Okay, yeah, we're, we're going to tie. Looks like time is down to 20 seconds. It will expire on Frank's turn, I would imagine, as he does have plays to make. And both of these players, of course, they are aware. They're not aware of the exact time, but they are aware that time is ticking down. they got to sure. imagine it's going to be pretty soon. Yeah, and Frank could actually you know, potentially set this up to where if Matt doesn't find another benched Pokemon next turn, he can try to go for that, you know, bird trio play um, by sweeping his board. And, you know, that's something Matt needs to be mindful of. And Frank, once again... He, oh, no, the he, Tapu Lele. He puts the Lele Just down. Keeps getting punished by the Tapu Lele. Silent Lab, meaning these basic Pokemon don't have abilities... Uh, Frank does have a Sycamore in hand, so he'll still have that option at least. But uh, I, you got to think he wanted a Guzma Hollow there in order to guarantee right. his stadium, guarantee his attachment. And stadiums are these sort of things that they, they matter so much. Obviously, in this matchup, it's been kind of what we've been talking about the entire matchup. But they kind of exist, you know, off to the side. It's very easy to just forget about it for one second and just accidentally, you know, leave yourself with a Tapu Lele that did nothing yeah. on the board. We've all been there. We've all done that. I've, I've definitely tried to use setup many times under Wobbuffet oh, or Silent Lab. Like, course. it happens. And... Uh, uh, especially in these high pressure situations, you know, being on stream, you know, knowing that if you win this game, you're in today too. Um, well, especially right now, trying to play so quickly too, as it looks like exactly. time is just going to expire right now. Um, you're just trying to play as quickly as possible and some things get lost in the shortcut. Yeah, and I think time was just called. Frank will be turn zero, meaning Matt will be turn one, Frank turn two, and Matt turn three. So each player, you know, Frank will get to finish this turn and he'll have one additional. Um, Matt will have two more turns to try to close things out. The only player I think that can actually win the game here is Frank. And uh, it would involve him taking a knockout this turn and then Matt not finding a, another Pokemon to put down. And then Frank could sweep the field with a um, Sky Legends GX for a knockout. Yeah, but it looks like he's not going to be able to here. You see, he just attaches to the uh, Cramorant and is going to search his deck for two cards using that Beat Catch ability or attack, rather. Yeah, and I mean, Cramorant is definitely in the deck for the spit shot attack, being able to do that 160 snipe, but the fact that it has beat catch actually just makes the card super cool and way more useful, honestly, um, especially when you consider the fact that you can use it for free with a Mew with Dimension Valley. Yeah, absolutely. Just th those little things that just make the cards actually, uh, make cards so much better. Looks like, yeah, those dice will be Representing there that uh, Frank will have turn two while Matt will have turns one and three. Don't really think there's a way 
yeah, I out for either player here. Yeah, uh, I don't think Matt can win. I don't think, you know, if Frank, like I said, had taken a knockout last turn, maybe something could have happened for him. But with only having one turn remaining and four Pokemon in play for Matt, it's not going to happen for Frank. Yeah, so unfortunately, it looks like this match will end in a tie. Um, player, players are playing it out just in case. Of course, you know, as we saw last game with the situation with Frank, we, there's, you know, they, they know their decks better than we do. They know their outs better than we do. Some, something could, you know, happen. Something could go wrong. But I have to imagine that uh, this game is going to end in a tie. I mean, honestly, from Matt's side of the field, he should play this out because you never know. I mean, Frank does have one more turn. If your opponent makes another big error, like Frank did with an illegal deck search and gets an escalated prize penalty, you could theoretically win from that where you take one prize here, your opponent is escalated to a quad prize penalty, sure, and sure. then you win the game. So yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely, it, you got to play to all your outs here when you're playing at such a high stakes tournament, such a high leverage situation for both of these players. For sure. But Matt, going to continue on just kind of, you know, playing as if time wasn't called, building up his resources, just saying, if there's anything you can do, I don't want you to be able to, I don't want you to be able to do it. I want to set up this Alolan Muck. I want to set up this uh, Silent Lab. I just want to be able to prevent you from doing anything you can. Yeah, and you got to think that if this game were to play out, Matt's in a really good position, but as it stands, uh, oh yeah, Frank can't even play the teammates because nothing was knocked out. Yeah, no knockouts to their teammates actually just cannot be played, so it goes right. back to Frank's hand. Yep. We will see the floatstone to at least move the Cramorant. Dimension Valley comes Dimension in play. Valley. Energy on the Mew now. And if he finds that uh, Stealthy Hood, he can attack with the Mew here, uh, which would, of course, negate the power of alchemy from Alolan Muck. And he is still behind on prizes, so counter energy is live. And this is Frank's last turn of the game. Again, you see the number two by his GX marker. This is a second turn. So he will not have a way to actually win the game here. So now he's just playing to say, okay, is there any kind of wild thing my opponent can do next turn to win? I need to try to prevent them from doing that. Yeah, I'm playing to make sure that, I mean, at this point he knows he can't win. So you have to make sure you play to not lose, right? Kind of what you're saying, making sure that you don't leave any options open for your opponent. And Frank will go ahead and pass. Matt will be turn three of time. This is the last turn of the game. And I think they're realizing, yep, We'll just attack here, and that yep. is... There's the handshake. Yep. That so, will be a tie. We went into this round saying, okay, whoever wins is going to make day two and, you know, be happy, and whoever loses is going to have another shot. Unfortunately, that's not how things turned out. There actually was no winner. Uh, the match ends in a tie. But what that means for both of these players is that they their backs are against the wall, and they have to win their next round, round nine. And if they, if they both win, they'll make it in. Uh, but it is, there's no more give, you know, there's no more ties. There's nothing. It's just literally you have to win the match. Yep, the win and, and end round. Anyway. Yeah, this is it. You win, you're in, you lose, you are out. It all comes down to this last round. So hopefully.